guys. Um, I am Annie Collins. And I'm June. And we're going to talk to you about date rape drugs. Now this is a unique class of drugs and it's important to talk about because you will likely, either yourself or somebody you know, will be involved in, in these sorts of situations um, before you graduate high school and it will go on to when you uh, go enter into college. So what are date rape drugs? Well that is any drug used to commit sexual assault. So you guys might be thinking, uh, can any drug be considered a date rape drug? And the fact of the matter is that yes, any drug can. Any drug that takes your uh, ability to consent, so either uh, through mental or physical incapacitation, um, it can be considered a date rape drug. We're going to be talking to you specifically about two drugs, alcohol and hypnol, but this is a very general category and, uh, and any drug can actually be con considered a date rape. So you guys also might be thinking, uh, can date rape only occur when drugs? Can your consent be taken away only through drugs? And the fact of the matter is, no. Um, any coercion uh, to engage in a, a, a sexual act without your consent is, uh, can be considered rape and should be reported as such. So how do we recognize consent? So let's think about this as, as we're talking about. So I want you guys to keep this question in mind. Uh, when can I tell when it, uh, a yes is an appropriate yes, or uh, when do I need to get consent? So keep that in mind, and let's talk about what is sexual assault. You guys might have heard it, you, you've heard of rape, but what do we actually consider sexual assault? Um, so sexual assault is um, any sexual act, so any sexual act, it doesn't necessarily mean what you guys think of as sex, um, that takes place without your clear expressed consent. So what is consent? Well, it is a very clear and unambiguous yes. Now, that, uh, that yes is um, only considered consent when you are mentally and physically able to consent. So we can think about how do drugs influence consent. Well, if you're mentally or physically incapacitated, either through alcohol or hypnol, or you're very high, it removes your ability to consent. So uh, I'll be talking to you more specifically about alcohol and how it influences the brain and why it's the number one drug associated with sexual assaults. So how does it work on the brain? Well, as we talked about, uh, neurotransmitters interact with brain cells through this lock and key mechanism. So they act on these receptors, these channels, which influence the state of the brain cell. So it can either activate it or it can inhibit it. So now with alcohol on board, it acts with this lock and key mechanism to inhibit your brain cells. And what this overall means is that messages within your brain gets lost and communication slows down. So how does that alter your behavior? Well, normally in, in normal situations, you guys are filtering a lot of your behavior. You might want to punch some guy that's annoying next to you on your face or plant a kiss on a cute girl, but uh, we inhibit that sort of behavior. And when you are drunk, your brain is depressed and or the neural activity is depressed or inhibited, and this removes your filter. So you're more likely to engage in fights, aggressive situations, and uh, construe situations as aggressive, and also engage in, in risky decisions um, and impulsive behavior. So <coughs> jumping off the roof into a pool might sound, uh, when you're sober, a horrible idea. Why would I chance my health, my scholarship, my future? But when you're drunk, those sort of considerations are blurred and you, are, uh, you might engage in, in more impulsive and risky decisions. Importantly, uh, because of these facts, this removes your ability to consent to sex when you are drunk. So it also, alcohol also has effects on your movement and your memory. So uh, with very high doses of alcohol, you, you drink a lot, binge drinking uh, depresses the brain so much so that you become unconscious. Here you can see. Uh, you can also, uh, with high doses, m remove your ability to move. So you uh, may have commonly heard of this as a passing out. You can also have a scenario where your brain is unconscious, but you can still physically move. So I can still make eye contact. I can maybe get out some words, and I can somewhat walk and function. But the fact of the matter is the brain is still um, unconscious. And so when thinking about how do we view consent, either of these scenarios, consent cannot be given. So you can tell if somebody, clearly if somebody's in this state, right? They're passed out, 
they're incapacitated, they cannot move, consent cannot be given. So any sexual act under this scenario would be considered sexual assault. But with blacking out, you can tell through slurred speech, it's incoherent, their gestures are incoherent, their eyes maybe are focusing on you, but not so much. That person isn't capable of giving consent, and so any sexual act in this state is uh, considered sexual assault as well. Additionally, uh, depressing the brain with alcohol impairs the ability, uh, the brain's ability to form connections, to form memories. And so after uh, binge drinking high doses of alcohol, you actually have memory impairments. So we've all heard of fetal alcohol syndrome, or maybe you guys have heard that it's bad to drink when you're pregnant, or when, when somebody's pregnant. And that's because the fetus is growing, there's neural development. That neural development takes place throughout your life up until around your mid-20s. So alcohol, during your teen period, during uh, your teen years, um, is, uh, a, a, can alter the brain's connections and the development, so much so that it can influence decision making throughout your whole life. So you, you might, you're more likely to engage in risky decisions uh, throughout your life, and also it leads to a higher propensity towards addiction. So we've all heard, we've all heard about um, a bunch of uh, myths with alcohol. So uh, if you guys think this statement is true, yell out true. If you think no, that's not true, yell out false. So coffee or other stimulants can counteract the effects of alcohol and sober you up. Who thinks that's true? True. 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 Okay, let's see. False. <gasps> Absolutely false. If anything, it will make you more physically active, but you will still be drunk. You can still not drive. You can still not function as a normal person. Okay. You should report sexual assault even if you were drinking under age or using illegal drugs. False. No, never. <laughs> that is true. Even if you were using uh, dr uh, drugs or drinking under age, you should absolutely speak out about it to somebody who's safe. And somebody who's safe is people who do not blame you, who do not judge you, and encourage you to speak out about that. And uh, within the pamphlet that we're passing out, there's a whole host of numbers that you can call and resources that you can look out in order to uh, speak out about any incident that might have occurred. Okay, only, having only one drink can put you over the legal limit to drive. Who thinks that's true? No, never. Oopsies. True. True. Very fast true. Very fast true. Very fast true. False true. I'm going to figure that out. Um, so for you guys under 21, what's the legal drinking limit? Anyone know? Point oh eight. Point oh eight. It is actually point oh eight if you are over 21, and I think it is zero. You said it was point oh four. But uh, at zero if you are under 21. So do not drink and drive. Okay, alcohol is depressant. Hopefully you guys know what that means now. So when you've hear, heard alcohol being classified as depressant, uh, does that mean that it makes you feel sad and depressed? No. Nope. Yeah. What your love? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what am I okay, but I'll figure it out. Uh, so that is false. So alcohol being depressant means that it reduces your neural activity. It inhibits your brain. Um, and so now, June, we'll be talking about that. Uh, for light. Alright, so Annie has just talked to you about um, alcohol, and I'm going to talk to you about rohypnol. So what is rohypnol? So can anyone tell me um, what another name for rohypnol is? <laughs> That's exactly the answer I was looking for. So if you don't recognize rohypnol by um, its name, you can also you might recognize it by the, its other name called Rufus. So some background information on rohypnol. So it's rohypnol is um, used as a treatment for insomnia or pre-surgery anesthetics. So before surgery, it's used as um, since rohypnol is depressant, it's um, it's used as a um, it's used to induce anesthesia in the patient. But um, it should be noted that rohypnol is illegal in the United States. So while rohypnol is used for these um, causes in other parts of the world, in the United States, illegal. And when rohypnol is used in the United States, it's usually smuggled in, and it's um, basically not legal. So rohypnol, also known as rufies, is a date rape drug. So pop quiz, um, what is the definition of a date rape drug? Any drug. Any drug. <laughs> yes, can someone raise their hand and then tell me what they, uh, from what Annie has talked about, what they think the definition of a date rape drug is? It makes you unconscious, so... 
Um, yes, so that might, a more concise way to put it is that um, it's... <laughs> Bringing down the students. <laughs> I'm sorry. So a more concise way to put it is that um, it's any drug used to commit sexual assault, since it takes away the person's ability to consent. So another uh, characteristic of Rohypno or Rufis is that it's odorless, colorless, and tasteless. But some companies have started putting um, dye in the um, Rohypno drug tablet so that it's more visible when it's dissolved in drinks. So that comes um, that transition, transi transitions into this point. Um, and how is it taken? So the main uh, method of intake that I want to go over is it being dissolved in drinks, which is uh, most prominent in what, when it's used as a date drug. So another thing is that when you go to parties or clubs, um, it's usually dissolved in alcohol. And one thing to note about that is it's um, rohypnol can be leaked the word alcohol. And that's because rohypnol is a depressant, um, as Amir has talked about uh, with depressants, and alcohol is also a depressant. And essentially, it gives a double, doubly effect of the negative consequences of um, both rohypnol and alcohol. And I'll go over this um, in the later slides. So what are its effects? So there are many effects that rohypnol can cause on your body, but I'm gonna go over just a few key effects. The first one is a loss of muscle control. So basically you lose control of um, what you can do to your body. Um, second thing is it gives a drunk-like behavior. So basically rohypnol gives similar effects uh, as alcohol. And third thing is it um, causes unfiltered behavior. So basically you have no filter on what, um, no filter on your behavior and in your actions. And the last thing um, is that when you're taking rohypnol, you can't remember what happened while using the drug. So after you take rohypnol, uh, you might, you'll basically don't remember anything that happened during um, the, the duration of the drug's effect. So how does rohypnol work? So you see this animation in um, the alcohol presentation, but I'm gonna go over it again. So you have the lock, uh, lock and key model where the neurotransmitter comes to the receptor. And uh, it affects the brain cells. Now you have rohypnol um, coming to the receptor and now um, it's basically causing a depressing effect on the neurons in your body. Whoa. So now with alcohol, what happens? So first thing, you have the neurotransmitter acting on the receptor again. So you have alcohol coming in as Annie showed. Um, it comes in and affects the receptor and it depresses um, the, your, the brain's um, the cells in your brain. And if you're taking it with rohypnol, essentially uh, both alcohol, alcohol and rohypnol acts in the receptor, and it causes an uh, increased depressing effect on your brain. So what do you do if you think you've been drugged? So this is a point that I really want to emphasize. So if you think you've been drugged, make sure you get medical help as soon as possible. Um, if you believe that you have been sexually assaulted, Getting medical help is the first thing that you need to do. Um, if you personally can't um, get medical help yourself, try to ask people around your friends to um, seek medical help for you. And the second thing is call the police. So make sure to report the situation. Um, don't be afraid to report the situation. Um, sexual assault is a very serious case, and um, we want that case to be reported as soon as possible. And the third thing is that you should um, get counseling and treatment. There are many resources out there available for everyone. Um, I put, as you can see in our pamphlets, um, there are some hotlines and websites that you can visit for um, counseling and treatment and make sure you utilize that. So one last thing I want to talk about is, they should say what she, should you do. But um, So let's say you're at a party and you suspect that your friend has been drugged. What should you do? Can anyone raise their hand and tell me one possible Idea. Leave the party. Leave it alone. <laughs> Let them go home with strangers. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so leave the party. That's the answer that I was actually looking for. So what would you, what, would, what should you do? So the moment that you suspect that your friend has been um, might have been drugged, the best thing to do is make um, to leave the scene of the party. Uh, since your friend has if if the if your friend has been drugged with hypnot or um, alcohol, then they're gonna soon feel the effects of rohypnol and they're gonna, that's gonna affect their decision making and their actions. So you wanna prevent 
that um, happening in the scene of the party to prevent possible cases of sexual assault. So uh, make sure you help your friend leave the uh, party scene and seek medical treatment as uh, seek medical help as soon as possible. And yeah, that's it.